Okay, what's going on everybody? My name is Mang. I'm Ziggy. And today we are doing our top 10 favorite N64 games. This was at Ziggy's request. He is a very big fan of the N64. So you said that you could do like a top 25. Yep. That would be a little trickier for me. Um, yeah, I was more of a PlayStation guy during that era. Yeah. But uh, I did make a list. It wasn't too difficult. And so we shall get right into it with some honorable mentions. So, I have one, but you can, you have a couple. I've got two honorable okay, mentions. Go ahead. Uh, my first one is Mario Party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The easiest cannon fodder for review magazines for many <laughs> yeah. years. Uh, once they started going beyond three or four of them, but I just remember in that moment when they were first coming out. Yeah. It's like you you got to come over. We're gonna have four player Mario Party and just. All these crazy mini games, and it's kind yeah. of like a board game, and it has Nintendo characters. It was tons of fun, yeah. and I hats off to Nintendo for spawning just an amazingly lucrative franchise off of that game. Yeah, the game itself, obviously, the mechanics and everything. It's it's not like this excellent example of a really no. polished design, but that's why it's one of mine. And then the other one for me is Donkey Kong sixty four. Um, mm -hmm. I that, basically that almost made the list. Yep, though. I acknowledge essentially three. Uh, really amazing 3D platforming games for the N64 and Donkey Kong 64 came in as the third one released. I'll get to the other ones later in the list, but personally um, I acknowledge it's a great game. I didn't really get into it quite as much as the others, but that was more of a preference thing and it just kind of came a bit later than the other ones, so those yeah. are my honorable mentions. I mean, personally it doesn't yeah. quite reach the heights of Donkey Kong Country, Yeah, um, but it did have a great theme song. So there was that. Yeah. Uh, my honorable mention is NFL Blitz. Nice. Uh, I'm not a sports game guy whatsoever. Um, it's really only like one of two sports games I ever played. But it was a very, very accessible sports game um, that appealed to even like people that weren't that big fans of football or anything like that. Um, it's very visceral and, and just simple and entertaining stuff. So Yeah, you get to snipe the players on the field before they even get the ball thrown. Yeah, them. And then you just, just are jumping on yeah, it. it no, it's, it's, it was it's amazing. Great. Absolutely. Great All right, let's begin the list properly then. My number 10 is Space Station Silicon Valley. Um, one of the odder titles, I think, yeah. for, the, uh, for the N64. This game featured you... Uh, I guess it's a platforming game that took place on different planets and in outer space and things like that. And you basically played like a little parasite that could jump into different animals and different uh, creations and things like that. And each one had its own special abilities and moves and things like that. And so a very, very unique platforming game. I revisited it uh, shortly while ago. I'm not sure if it quite holds up compared to some N64 games, but... Uh, very memorable times with that. I still still remember having a good time. My favorite was the King Penguin, who mm -hmm. could command his little squad of yeah. snowball throwing. Pe I, I thought I'm like got my army here. Just very unique yeah. stuff. My number ten is F Zero X. Uh, Nintendo sixty four actually had a lot of really solid racing games. Um, Wave Racer was decent. Mario Kart, of course. Um, but F Zero X uh, was really um, the second major F Zero title in Nintendo's franchise of it, and the the concept of going at a ridiculously high speed, I think, was really first achieved with this version. Uh, they really continue it uh, with the GameCube F Zero GX, but I just remember playing this game and just was blown away by just how fast um, it had a lot of different characters and was just really, I didn't feel I'd get that excited about a racing game that wasn't part of, you know, a Nintendo's brand of just having crazy items that, you know, changed the whole nature. But it was just a, a solid game and it was just uh, really, I think, one of the best um, examples of what the N64's graphical capabilities and limitations were, so... I mean, unfortunately, yep. in the grand scheme of things, largely overshadowed by Mario Kart. Yep. But uh, I, but I, I'm highlighting F Zero X for my number ten. Okay. Number nine is Bomberman Hero. Now this is the kind of second Bomberman game. I think they yep. came out for N64 after Bomberman yep. 64. And up to those games, Bomberman was just largely like a a just just a 2D 
on a grid, you're placing bombs, you're blowing up blocks, you're, you're getting bigger bombs, more bombs, things like that. And Bomberman 64, Bomberman Hero especially, um, really turned it into a full-fledged game for me. Yeah. Um, where you got different kinds of bombs, and it was... You got different, like, you got, like, a jetpack and a submarine, and it was this whole experience compared to what Bomberman was. And Bomberman Hero didn't even have a multiplayer mode. No, it that didn't. That was a big it difference didn't. between that crazy. and 64, and I agree, it stands, it stands on its own alone, feet enough. It was, it was a just player. a good, solid platforming game, so... I never knew you liked that game. I, I liked it. I'm a huge fan. I have it on Virtual Console, so... Nice. It's a good game. Yep. My number nine is Paper Mario. Um, this, uh... This was actually the first Mario role-playing game that I played growing up. I didn't have a Super Nintendo or any older siblings, yeah, and did. so, yep. I mean, in you know, Paper Mario, Mario RPG. It's it's very it's in very dear places for a lot of old school Nintendo fans. And I, Paper Mario, I just was very impressed that you know Nintendo has their their little Mushroom Kingdom universe and can really make it fun and interesting in an RPG setting. And so I like the, the different characters, the, the Koopa abilities, um, even having your little Goomba buddy analyzing the different mm -hmm. weaknesses of the enemies and everything. It was, it was fun, very satisfying. And when I first saw it, I wasn't really expecting much of it. But um, yeah, I really liked Paper Mario. It Great was game. very close to making my list. I think it would have if I have... If I'd played it recently, yeah, I think it would have like kickstarted some nice memories. Mm -hmm. um, for a Super Nintendo list, Super Mario RPG would absolutely oh, yeah. make it. Yep. So, all right, number eight. This is going to be a little off the wall. Uh, number eight is Battle Tanks Global Assault. Mm -hmm. This is a um, this is a game where you play <laughs> as different types of tanks. It's all tanks. Everybody's in tanks. Uh, and you get different power-ups and different weapons and things like that. And it had a single player, but it was largely forgettable. And uh, I spent a great amount of time with my brother and my friend on the street just playing the multiplayer for hours on end. And this was really the big thing about the N64 that just made it so much different than anything we had up to that point was multiplayer. It was it was really the king of the four player split screen. Yeah, yep. I mean the that Super Nintendo, the yep. you could get like an adapter, and there may be a couple of games that supported it, but up to that point, everything was just kind of solo. Yeah, and or so, you played beat 'em ups with one buddy yeah, next to you. Right, yeah. right. And mm -hmm. so for the N64 to come in and just four player, just right away, you can do it. Um, and there were all these great multiplayer. There was going to be a number of them on the list. Um, that really just kind of set the new bar for multiplayer. And Battle Tanks was. Um, I think an earlier title as far as my multiplayer experiences mm -hmm. and was overshadowed by some other games, but uh, I still have very fond memories of it. Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of remembering that game now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, was a good game. Yeah, it had some I, great yeah. weapons, guided missiles that you actually, you know, guided through the map to hit somebody. It was just yeah. a lot of fun moments. Uh, my number eight is Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Mm. Um, this uh, was really... I mean, I had played Pilot Wings, but this was a bit more of a serious flight simulator. And of course, you're flying X Wings, A Wings, Y Wings, and yep, you're yep. blowing the crap out of Imperial installations yep. and shooting TIE fighters. And this game was so good that it attracted attention from the PC community who had uh, Star Wars TIE Fighter and X Wing. Yep. Though it brought some of those fans over just to play yep. Rogue Squadron. And I know they, they would make PC uh, yeah. ports and everything, but wow. Um, I was a big Star Wars fan growing up, still am, and this immersed me into kind of another layer of the Star Wars universe, just really liking the space combat yep. and having, you know, little heroes. I think Wedge Antilles is usually mm -hmm. who they followed for being a member and the leader of Rogue Squadron that, yep. you know, um, you can still continue to explore the Star Wars universe and add just different planets and battles that weren't showcased in the movies but still be really exciting, really fun. And that game just had amazing flight mechanics, even for the N64. I enjoyed the the little one for Naboo Starfighter that even mm -hmm. followed after that, because I just loved this one so and much. And that so. series has kind of disappeared. Yep, they made Rebel Strike for the GameCube, yeah. and that was a flop because of its ground-based missions, where you're running yeah. around with a blaster, just kind of mindlessly mowing down stormtroopers. Mm -hmm. It still had excellent flying segments, but that, that marred its legacy, and they're yeah. like, we're not... We're not focusing on Rogue Squadron anymore after that. Some game. I think they yeah. might be doing something with VR now with with uh, the space battles in Star Wars, but yeah, yeah, Rogue Squadron is very entertaining stuff. Okay, my number seven is Kirby sixty four. 
Um, I don't know if it's the actual title of it. I think it's Kirby the Crystal Shards, yeah, I want to say. Kirby, yep. something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was a huge, huge fan of uh, the, the Kirby uh, Superstar, whatever game, on Super Nintendo. Uh, played it through many times, still one of my favorite games. And so the N64 version came out, and I was expecting, you know, that the bar was high. And the thing that I think was even better in Kirby 64 was all the different combinations of powers. That was really awesome to me. It was combining two different uh, powers or elements or things like that to make new stuff, and there was just a lot of uh, variation in that 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 kept the game being interesting. Was that the game that introduced his refrigerator, where you did, like, stone and rock, and he turned into a fridge and shot ice cubes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just a lot of just fun (laughs) stuff going on in that game. Yeah. very good. I not quite maybe as good as the no. Super Nintendo Kirby, but yep. very but fun stuff. Same thing for me with Paper Mario. That was like my Kirby Discovery game mm-hmm. since I was like N sixty four was my first generation yep. of gaming, yep. and I I thought it was a great game. Too. Great. Um, my number seven is Star Fox sixty four, mm. and it's funny that I've got my two space combat games right next to each other in the list. This and, high up on your list, huh? Oh yeah. Yep. Um, and Star Fox sixty four controls completely different from rogue squadron in that it's it's essentially an on rail Mm -hmm. flight game unless you're entering all range mode yeah um and mechanically um yeah it's not as sophisticated as rogue squadron but it had an arcade like experience when you go through single player you're you're gonna go through the lilac system go to these different planets with uh really good enemy variety and you're gonna rack up as many hits as you can you beat the game, and then um, most most times after I do a playthrough, I want to go again because I want to do a different route through the system. I want to get higher scores. They gave you medals similar to Rogue Squadron based on your performance. And uh, unlike Rogue Squadron, Star Fox 64 also had a very good four-player split-screen multiplayer. Uh, a good mm-hmm. stamp of a lot of high-quality N64 mm-hmm. games. Mm-hmm. And um, Star Fox 64 also did land-based uh, missions um yeah with the, i didn't yeah. like it as much yeah the, the land-based parts it yep. was kind of like well you know it's it's an interesting variation yep. but and in future games uh and with rebel strike it kind of killed it like it's usually they can't do both well and i think star fox 64 did a little bit better than some of the future ones but boy yeah. it was an addicting fun game for there's me. another game yep. that's very close to making the list all right, number six, Gauntlet Legends. You ever play this one? Yep. Yeah. Man, yeah. oh yeah. man, so <laughs> many hours spent playing multiplayer in Gauntlet Legends. Because I don't think I would really played anything Gauntlet up to that point, and so yeah. it was just kind of a, um, on a very arcadey, uh, somewhat casual, although it did get very difficult towards the end. Um, just a great way to spend, you know, hours of time with some people. Uh, and you had different classes. You had a wizard and like a falconess and things like that. And um, it was just very, very, very colorful game. Um, yeah, I would like to play it right now. Just, just hack and slash. Just <laughs> hundreds of enemies you're slaughtering throughout the whole game. Um, obviously not as deep as something like Diablo or something like that. But mm-hmm. again, pointing to the multiplayer aspect of the N64, it was just something special at the time. Yeah, you could still shoot the food in that one too. I think. Yeah, you could, <laughs> and get very pissed at people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good one. It's okay. a good one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, my number six is Perfect Dark. Wow, I thought this would be uh, towards the. Well, here's the where number. hopefully we can just appreciate each other's uh, mm-hmm. differences on mm-hmm. and perspectives here. Yeah. But um, I'm sure we're both going to be talking about this game. But mm-hmm. um, a few things that I really liked um, was that. Uh, the mission complexity and the objectives, um, it was really, it's single player mode was going a bit beyond um, just killing all the enemies and making it to the end where you just, like in Doom, you just go through a door and right. you've com- cleared right. the stage. Um, they had the cam spy and all these other little gadgets um, where it's just, you felt like they had done a, re- Rare had done a really good job kind of creating this cool little sci fi universe in yep. Perfect Dark interesting protagonist uh, great soundtrack i love the soundtrack That's i still great. listen to it and um an excellent multiplayer game as well that mm-hmm. really expanded on a lot of the things that rare had done previously with gold and i um and uh yeah i kind of i got perfect dark 
uh, a while after it came out, actually, I'm just like, oh, you know, it can't be as good as GoldenEye, and, you know, I'm, I'm too busy playing some of, the, some of these other games, but then when I did, I was really glad that I picked it up. Uh, probably the most refined first-person shooter that would ever come out on the N64. Yeah, we'll talk about it more yep. later. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, my number five is Jet Force Gemini. Uh, so Jet Force Gemini is a kind of third-person action platforming game starring three different characters. Um, and it's a very kind of science fiction, um, globe-spanning, planet-exploring thing um, that has a very strong three quarters and then a annoying last quarter, I would say. Yep. Um, and I, Jet Force Gemini was one of my first Let's Plays that I ever did, and so I got to really revisit the game. And it did lower my opinion of the game, but I still wanted to put it on this list because I think, regardless of the whole tribal thing towards the end, overall the game is one of the best action platforming games on the N64. Yeah. Um, you know, the controls, obviously, way back then it was like, okay, well, this is how it is. And compared to something like, you know, um, Doom, which has a very straightforward whatever, you know, they, they are operating within 3D spaces, and you could do, you know, sniping, and you could do different things, and so I think it was as good as it could have been, um, and it was just so, so much fun to just blast ants away and all these yeah. different awesome guns, um, and kind of started my love to something like, uh, like the Ratchet and Clank series, where you're just obliterating things with all these awesome weapons and stuff like that. Great times. Yeah. I think you nailed it with how ambitious it was being yeah. exploration and combat yep. and kind of how it paved the way. Very it ambitious title. Very... Back when, you know, Rare was just yep. no, it was blowing very, things away. That was a very close honorable mention for me. Okay. Um, uh, that was your number five, yep. right? Okay. <laughs> My number five, it's a Rare title. Yep. Think about it for a moment, see if you can guess it. So many Rare games in the N64 era. Banjo-Kazooie. That's correct. Um so Banjo-Kazooie, I'd say, was the second uh, great 3D platformer that came out in N64's life cycle. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said, Rare's Golden Age was really peaking right now. They could just create a totally new franchise, totally yep. new IP. They're like, okay, we're going to do the th nice 3D right. platformer yep. here. You're going to go through Gruntilda's lair and find Jiggies. And it was really... Um, quite nuanced and whimsical how you had you know a bird and a bear and yeah. they interact with each other differently and it i think it really took advantage of um actually making the n64's awkward controller really fit nicely as you'd unlock these new abilities where mm -hmm. um you know you, you'd like throw her in the backpack and yeah. you know you just um banjo kazooie and banjo tooie uh, which i didn't include on the list just because i can only name so many yep. uh, both of those games were just outstanding and just overall excellent design games yep. they looked good very colorful They're, and just yeah enjoyable stuff yeah so just really fun game and um it's just it's a perfect example of the kind of quality that rare was putting out yeah you can't really praise rare enough during those days which nope. i think some people don't really you know remember nowadays rare is nothing nowadays yeah, yep but back then, you know, they could they could put out first person shooters and platforming and third person shooters and just blow people all, away. It was all good. It was all yep. good. So yeah, they've fallen quite away, but we can reminisce. Yeah, and I, I just will quickly mention. Um, so I've mentioned Banjo Kazooie and Perfect Dark now, mm -hmm. and uh, when those came out on Xbox 360's Live Arcade, yep. I was so happy with that because I got to play through them again mm -hmm. with a fresh coat of paint on. Mm -hmm. them. All right, my number four. You ready for this? Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you've been following my channel, you know that I've been Let's Playing all the Zelda games. And prior to that, way back when, uh, I was a pretty big fan of Ocarina of Time. I had beaten it uh, a few times, and I don't think I'd ever really, really gotten into the whole exploration factor of the Zelda games. Um, you know, I liked the, I liked the combat... I like going through the dungeons. I like just playing, you know, fairly linearly through the game. And, you know, Ocarina of Time, when it came out, it was very hyped. It was a very hyped title. I oh, remember yeah. my dad saying to me that you'll have to take notes when you're going yeah. through it. Otherwise, you'll get completely lost. You'll never complete it. And as a kid, I was like, what? That's crazy. Because <laughs> um, obviously, I had played Link to the Past, and uh -huh. that was not the case. Um, but, you know, this was the first 3D Zelda 
the bar was very, very high. And at the time, yes, I think it, it definitely delivered. It was a mm. just a, an incredible, fantastical experience. It really had no comparison. There was, not, there was nothing to compare it to. Yeah. Um, as time goes on, I think it has weakened a little bit, in my opinion. But for the N64's library, there aren't many games that are, that are better, more epic than Ocarina of Time. And Majora's Mask does not make my list, so I do think it is better. Okay. Uh, my number three is Super Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. um, I've mentioned a few times now, you know, N64, great four person splits, yep. uh, four player split screen experience. Super Smash Brothers is the absolute king of that. Um, and it did it in a way that synthesized. Um, a lot of these franchises uh, and brought them together in a way that Nintendo had never really experimented with before. Mm -hmm. And wow, was that a fun experience. Um, it was, you know, when I was first playing that game, I'm like, well, we're on top of Great Fox, you know, Link fighting, you know, um, Yoshi. And it's mm -hmm. just like, it blew my mind. And, you know, I've never really liked fighting games all that much. No. And Super Smash Brothers, I think all of its titles really fall into this weird category of fighting yeah, game. Yeah, it's a little it's, odd. It's not a proper fighting game. Um, it Its mechanics are streamlined and simplified, but, you know, depending on how you block and connecting your smash moves and even using items skillfully, there's still a very high degree of it's, skill. It's, it's a thing that use, Nintendo yeah. has been very good at with having a low barrier to entry. Yes. Compared to other games in the genre yep. and yet still having a very high skill cap yep because you still have you know esport related events mm -hmm. of melee yep. uh, and, and melee. the uh, the recent one uh, to a lesser extent but yep. um yeah super smash brothers uh still um you know i'd much rather play one of the more recent ones now compared to the n64 sure, one sure, but sure. this is one of those games where in its time it was so there was so much buzz about it and it was just kind of like the de facto game if you were going to go to, over to somebody's house mm -hmm. when, once it was out and they had an n64 yep yep my top three games i picked com pretty much entirely because of multiplayer so okay. number three is mario kart 64 um now there was mario kart on the super nintendo and I did play it, but not anywhere near as much as Mario Kart 64. Again, because of the multiplayer issue mostly, but they, they just added on to this kind of greatness to make mm -hmm. something really, really memorable. And yeah, I, racing games still to this day I'm not a huge fan of. But again, Mario Kart is accessible to almost anybody. Pretty much like, you know, grandparents and uncle, whoever, anybody can pretty much pick up and play Mario Kart without being too confused yep. while still having like, oh, you can always be a little better at it. You can just, you know, push yourself a little harder. Yep. And um, so, yeah, just, it's just kind of a, a great hallmark of Nintendo games where you can, you can sit there with, with your friends and family and, you know, you're you're throwing red shells at each other, and there's blue shells, and you're throwing banana peels, and there's just pretty much a nonstop fun uh, with something like Mario Kart 64. Who who is your preferred character? Uh, Wario. I was all about the Donkey Kong back mm -hmm. then. <laughs> yep. Uh, my number three is Goldeneye. Um, I figured. Yep. Uh, Goldeneye was the first FPS that I really played a whole lot, but even if it was not. Um, GoldenEye's level design and uh, multiplayer was genre defining especially for consoles but it influenced PC FPS as well mm -hmm. and um, it did it with the James Bond franchise and one thing I've noticed when I play GoldenEye is that you know just kind of the whole Bond part is really, you know, you kind of notice after the fact, you're just really playing a solid first-person shooter. Yeah, I mean, I had played it, I had never watched a single James Bond <laughs> No, movie. and it's amazing how long they stretch the movie to make the, yeah. the single player right. have as many levels as they do, but um, that, actually, that game actually made a, a James Bond fan of me, because I'm just like, wow, you can just be this badass secret agent, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. from your silence pistol to a rocket launcher, yeah. or, you know, it's just, um, yeah, it's... Uh, its enemy design was was good for its time. They uh, the whole thing where you shoot them and they respond to where you shoot them. Yeah. It, it wasn't very well no uh, realized at yet, the time. But, 
yeah, just a lot of really innovative features, and it the controls felt smooth. I think that was one of the most important things with it. It was yeah. very responsive. The frame rates were inconsistent, but that kind of would plague any N64 game. So another one of those games that really benefits if you, uh, unfortunately for licensing issues, they haven't really reported GoldenEye apart from like Steam uh, user edited yeah. ones, but excellent game uh i think it's it's should, it's one of those genre defining yep, yep. games should be in anyone's top five or even top three perhaps for n64 i would hope um <laughs> yeah i mean yep. the multiplayer of course was a huge i remember yeah. one of the single player levels uh, i'll never forget like you start in a jail cell right and yep. you just have like your laser watch and and your slap yeah yep. and your slap <laughs> and it's just like that's crazy because in Doom, you were never without a, a gun. No. You pretty much always had a weapon. Yep. You could blow things up. So to just be in a cell and just, you know, have your watch on you is, yeah. is crazy. All right. Uh, my number two is Super Smash Brothers. Um, yeah, again, just kind of the... It, it has a huge legacy, obviously, at this point. And it's a testament, again, to Nintendo that really no other company could do something like this. Now, yeah. To this day, you know, they tried PlayStation All-Stars or whatever like that, and yeah. Microsoft didn't even attempt something like this. And there was, like, just... a Crash Bandicoot Racing, I think, that tried yeah. to clone Mario Kart. Yeah. Yep. But to just be able to take characters just from your platform, um, mainly just first-party stuff, and to put it all in one game and make it an incre incredible game, yep. it, was, it was astonishing at the time. And um, I don't think I played this perhaps as much during the day as something like Mario Kart or Perfect Dark. But that was largely because my brother just could not handle Super Smash Brothers. He would Super Smash the cartridge. So Or you. <laughs> Go yeah, and get into a little brawl. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. yep. Tensions were high. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but yeah, absolutely. Yep. Just flying, you know, all these different levels, being in Hyrule Castle, and it's like, you know, you, 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 you're playing Ocarina of Time, then you go play Super Smash Brothers, and it's like, wow, you know, it's just all these different things that are just purely Nintendo. Yeah. Um, back when I was still a huge Nintendo fan. Yeah. So yeah, Super Smash right. Brothers, great stuff. Yep. My number two is Ocarina of Time. Mm -hmm. Um, I I've kind of put it on the list in pl in not not Majora's Mask for some of the same reasons you do. I know you didn't like Majora's Mask personally that much either. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, Ocarina of Time really uh, showed what was possible with Zelda in the three D space. Mm -hmm. Um. I remember being frustrated when I first started playing it. Um, you know, I, I think I got through kind of the Great Deku Tree, and yep. then there were a few parts of, of the plot progression where, you know, you're you haven't really taken the Master Sword yet, and it wasn't clear what to do. Like, you have to go, you know, push a milk crate and wake up a guy yep, um, with yep, a cuckoo, exactly. and you have to go. Do, and, and, you know, that, that was. And, uh, you know, before you were really on the internet a lot, and before, yeah. if you didn't have a strategy guide or something, it was just like, you Right, know. and so there were times when I was very frustrated with this game, uh, the Water Temple being, yeah, you know, the, the, uh, the infamous dungeon that, you know, was really annoying with all the different water levels that you had to manipulate. The but, Lost Forest, I remember, Lost Woods, I remember I didn't like at all. Yeah, but uh, when that game had its, its highs, yes. they were just magnificent yep. moments. Exactly. Uh, there were just... So many different moments of satisfaction and being hungry for continuing to see what was the next piece of gear you were going to get that was going to let you kick more ass or yeah. be able to get through dungeons that looked impossible the way that you had to either you know ascend to a higher level or get through some barriers. But um, and then beating the game, just the whole epic kind of scale of that game where you've come full circle and Link's progression as a character, I just. I, I felt just very complete when I had finished that game uh, first time and even subsequent replayings that this was just a truly epic quest and Nintendo captured it all you know on a piece of technology that was a big jump from where they were before and it was just very impression made a large impression on me and um, yeah outstanding game very epic and um, I still enjoy the Zelda series um, as a result of kind of playing that game yeah maybe. and and that's why it, yeah. it made my list you know i've complained yeah. about that game in the whole zelda series but ocarina of time at its best moments yeah. is like pretty much the highest the, the zelda series can yeah. be um and yeah it was again yeah. kind of a genre defining game do you want me to go back to back to give you the final uh number one no it's not necessary okay uh all right number one what do you think it is 
You haven't mentioned Perfect Dark yet. I have not, but I, I will now. Yeah. <laughs> Number one is Perfect Dark. So Golden Eye does not make my list, unfortunately, okay. because I didn't want to have both of them on the list. Um, they are fairly similar, I think, um, as far as gameplay goes. But Perfect Dark edges it out for me um, because it did take everything that Gold. I love Golden Eye. I really did. We played it a lot. Yep. And then Perfect Dark came out. And it was like, well, I don't really need to play GoldenEye for multiplayer anymore. Um, you know, Perfect Dark took the foundation of GoldenEye, and then it just added, you know, it added all the crazy bots. Those were all fun. I don't think GoldenEye had as many, I don't really remember, for, like, the different bots. No, I don't, I didn't think you could play bots. See, GoldenEye there you go, see, there you go. And you would never go past four, either. Right, right. You could yeah, have you tons could have of bots. So many bots, <laughs> yeah. and it was just, so That's you could true. actually do, yep. like, a cooperative type scenario, where it's like, you yep. four against a whole team of crazy bots. Yep. Um, you had all these different crazy weapons, you had the laptop guns, you could set up, like, turrets, and you had, like, the far sight so you could shoot through walls. That you could was just my be cheesing all day with the far gun. side. Yep. Um, all these just different kind of sci-fi weapons and stuff like yeah. that. And so combined, it was absolutely the pinnacle of first-person shooters entirely yeah. at the time. I recently heard it described as when it came out, it was one of the most complete first-person shooters yes. in terms of all the different modes it included. Mm -hmm. It even had... Um, the firing range, which was really fun. You could just try and get top three tier because the guns had their alternate fires too. And a lot yep, of times that yep, would completely yep. change how you use the gun. Exactly. So. And so, like the laptop gun, it was normally yeah. just like a, a submachine gun, but then you could throw it out as a turret as well. And yeah, I mean, I like the single player, mm -hmm. but so, so yeah. many. More and more multiplayer than any other game. I, I knew you'd talk about the multiplayer yeah. enough. Yeah, like for just. Me, so. yeah. <laughs> you'd sit there just for hours on end. It's like, okay, let's let's do this this time. Let's change it up with yep. this. Let's do only these guns. Let's do yeah. only proxy mines. You know, all these different setups. Just, yeah, like, yeah, the most complete first person mm -hmm. shooter at the time. Okay, my top N64. I game. have no idea what it is. Is it Mystical Ninja? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised and, uh, it didn't make your and list. It's, and it's not Mischief Makers either. Oh, man. Yep. It is Super Mario 64. Oh, uh, yeah. I think, historically, there are very few games as significant as Mario 64. Um, and that's for a number of reasons. When it first came out, I couldn't say if there were any 3D platforming games where you could have a full range, 360 ro range of vision, mm -hmm. and... It was actually a good game that that worked well it had smooth controls um and was addictive was it a launch title it was yeah and so. it's and nintendo has not had a launch title like mario 64 ever I would, since i would agree with that and so uh like i said kind of in the long-term perspective of games i it's important for those reasons i just mentioned but um you know this game it holds up so well it, it's really surprising it's uh you know kind of a staple of the speed run community yeah and that you know the n64 controller which is usually crapped on uh the inputs that you can do in mario 64 and just how well you can control yeah. mario around is the the presence amazing. of the analog stick yeah which the playstation did not have um meant that you really couldn't do something like Mario yeah. 64. And uh, I've, I've tied in how my list kind of relates to me on a personal level. Maybe a little too much for a top 10 list, but for me, Mario 64 kind of just really awakened the fact that I'm like, I really like video games. Mm -hmm. I I would just come come home every day, let, I'm going to play Mario 64 a bit more. And, you know, for a lot of gamers, you know, they kind of have one game where they really can first remember, like... Yeah. Being like, this is more than just, you know, just like, I'm going to play this game and then maybe a few years from now I'll play another game. But it really made me kind of like a gamer, I would say, in yeah. that um, it was a just it kind of, I saw entertainment really in a different light as a result of Mario 64. And, you know, I loved my N64 as a result of it. And it took me a long ass time as a youngster to get all 120 yeah, I bet. stars. I bet. Because <laughs> there's a... You know, as you've put it, Nintendo is a great way of having easily approachable, but then yep. if you want to 100% something or be really good at something, the games are precise enough, uh, they accommodate people with, you know, better skill sets to really yeah. complete some of those special challenges. And Mario 64, a very special game to me, and showcased 3D games, I think, and especially 3D games on the N64 that really paved the way for this console to be so memorable yeah. for a lot of gamers. A really, really brilliant launch title. Yeah. 
it didn't quite make my list because I'm just overall not a yeah. huge fan of 3D platformers. But yeah, at the time that was pretty mind blowing to go right. from you know Super Mario Brothers three. Uh, and suddenly yeah. it's just like oh it all it's, it's all open yep. everything is just open to you and you jump into the painting for the yep. first world and it's just like look look at everything that is going on and you'll get mad at the camera sometimes yeah. and some of the polygons look kind of crappy because it's, you know, it's early 3D but yeah. pushing that aside it was just really amazing and it again takes yep. Nintendo's philosophy of, of, of level design and, yeah. and control specifically like that game mm -hmm. had to control practically perfectly yeah. otherwise it would have been kind of a disaster mm -hmm. and so yeah it's again another genre defining game which the n64 yeah. had a number of so there you have it 10 through 1 um now like i said you're a bigger fan of the n64 than i, I was more of a playstation guy because the n64 yeah. you know i grew up on the super nintendo with rpgs yep. that was mainly how i spent my time and the n64 i think lacks a little bit in that department. Oh, it, it absolutely does. That would definitely, I'd yeah, say. And I, but I think it's good that for this list we had our two mm -hmm, perspectives mm -hmm. here. That was um, So I had range. the PlayStation. Yeah. I had Final Fantasy VII. I had things like that. But PlayStation did not have multiplayer like N64 did. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the yep. majority of my time went for that. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely, you know, the second best console Nintendo has had, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just smile at that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that, uh, that's a discussion for another yeah. day, I even argue. So, so yeah. there you go. Uh, <laughs> all right, that is that then. What should our What should our next list be? Oh boy, I mean, we've done movies. Mm -hmm. We've done, uh, boy. See, um, I don't know if you could. <laughs> could you do a top ten SNES? No, I wouldn't feel comfortable. But you could do that. top ten GameCube. Absolutely. So we might do Top 10 okay. Game View. I think we could do that. All right. So my name is Mang. I'm Ziggy. This has been Top 10 N64 Games. I'll see if my folks are on. <laughs>